Hey folks, welcome to module two. In this module, our expert will go over finding businesses, brokers, and lawyers. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. All right, so we're going to start here on sort of the lower end of business buying and selling marketplaces. And by low end, all I mean is the average price tag and size of the business and, and all that. Uh, we're starting here at the exchange, which is at exchangemarketplace.com. And this is created by Shopify. Shopify, if you don't know who they are, they're sort of the premier online e-commerce store building platform. Uh, very popular. A huge, huge percentage of the e-commerce stores online are created through Shopify. And they create a marketplace here where people can buy and sell businesses. And the cool thing about this marketplace here is that the data is directly fed from Shopify itself. So Shopify is able to actually validate and verify the sales and traffic data here. So there's no room for the business owners who are selling these to sort of fudge the uh, the statistics. Now, it, it's not possible really for Shopify to verify what their expenses are as far as going out and buying, you know, paid advertising and stuff. So you still got to do your due diligence and stuff. But it is kind of nice to know that the numbers that you see here are directly from Shopify itself. Uh, let's have a look at this one here, Ecofish Tackle. That uh, looks like a very cool business, um, environmentally friendly all that good stuff, um, and they have some good numbers here. So uh, right here, their average revenue per month is 34,000. Their average sessions per month, 66,000. So they're getting a whole lot of traffic. Average profit is 11,000 per month. Now, that actually would be a pretty good deal. Um, 11,000, let's go ahead and grab our calculator here. That would give us times 12 an annual profit of 132,000. And of course, this times three was that sort of uh, sweet spot number that we talked about earlier. So annual profit times three is where generally uh, where you want the sale price to be. So times three would bring us up to $396,000 and they're selling it for $79,000. Now, why is that? Well, could be a few reasons. The main reason, though, is that, like I said earlier, this is sort of the lower end or the, the small pond of places to buy and sell businesses. A lot of these Shopify stores don't actually have enough data to back up this number with a whole lot of certainty. Okay, a lot of these Shopify stores are created by people who create e-commerce stores, and they're good stores, but they run them for about, you know, six months or so. And in fact, here's a chart we'll have a look at in a second. And then they use those numbers, and they know, it's, it's an integrity thing, they know that they can't go for the standard, you know, month times 12 times 3 price tag model here, um, at least not in good conscience, because they don't actually have that much proof of performance. They only have, you know, in many cases, several months of performance here. Um, so you can read here about the uh, the business a little bit, uh, why it was started, the reason for selling, uh, what's involved in running it. It's uh, Most of these e-commerce stores are largely hands-off. All you're doing is maintaining ads that send traffic to them, and uh, you've got maybe a virtual assistant who does the uh, fulfillment and customer service and all that good stuff. Um, here's some more stats. We saw these ones already. 30% profit margin, average sales per month, 7,000. Uh, that's units being sold. Average revenue, sales number, um, would be uh, 34,000, as we already saw. And uh, here's the actual data that you want to look at. So uh, clearly this site was largely dormant and not used for several months. And then they started ramping it up and bringing in all those sales here and you've got you, you kind of have to make a you know a, a decision whether or not you want to pursue a store with such a short sales history um, however that's kind of the whole point of the Shopify scene and that's also why the price is uh, so low compared to their average uh, profit um, again if, if they actually stuck to the standard model 
and they had more history, you'd be paying something closer to this. And in this case, the uh, the price is much, much lower. But you can look into this company as much as you want via the Shopify data here. And it might be a good jumping off point for uh, inquiring a little bit further, asking more questions uh, with the seller and having a, a business broker reach out um, to this uh, to this company and get some more data. But that's that's what you can expect from the exchange, from the Shopify uh, marketplace. Next, and the stepping it up a notch as far as uh, size and price tag, is Empire Flippers. Empire Flippers is a, a very big database uh, compared to the exchange, at least, uh, as far as having large businesses, um, you know, legit businesses with, you know, longer uh, sales history and that sort of thing. Uh, you can search Empire Flippers, the marketplace here. You'll notice a lot of these businesses have what are clearly the... Uh, the, the more standard um, profit, annual profit times three model here for their pricing. And uh, there's a whole whole large spectrum of uh, categories that these businesses exist in. Uh, we could click on, uh, let's say, this one here. Apparel and accessories is the niche. Um, and it is a SaaS. And uh, they've got some other monetization tags there. Uh, the price is one million eight hundred thousand, um, or more than that, and the monthly net profit is fifty-two thousand, with a multiple of thirty-six x. So what we can do click on this one and have a look at some more of the details for this listing. Uh, Empire Flippers is, is kind of a more serious site, so to unlock um, you know the actual identity and more of the details about the listing. Um, depending on, on their settings, you will actually be expected to um, provide some identifying information about yourself. And the main reason for that is companies don't necessarily want the fact that they are going uh, to be selling soon or even toying with the idea of selling to be public because sometimes that can negatively impact their business, uh, even if they're not selling for a, a bad reason. Um, you know, They're just selling because they want to retire. Hearing that a business is about to be sold sometimes uh, can have a, a negative impact on their business. So uh, that's the reason for the, uh, you know, the sort of uh, uh, secrecy here, if you will. Um, there's uh, a whole lot of data here. Um, oh, it's, it's quite a bit, you know, meatier than what we saw on the exchange. Um, this is basically a SaaS application. It's a, a, a plugin or an extension um, that uh, helps people sell products on e-commerce stores. And their primary source of revenue is through sale of products through this app. Okay, so it installs into the uh, the Shopify platform. You know, it's, it's one of the apps that you can get inside of Shopify. And when products are sold using this app, uh, they get some revenue from that, and that's ninety seven percent of their earnings. And they also have a smaller percentage from. Uh, different uh, you know, premium versions of the app, as well as affiliate offers, and it says YouTube AdSense accounts. This is uh, actually a pretty attractive model here because they don't have to spend a whole bunch on ads to get these specific sales that cause 90% of their revenue. Uh, all they're doing is advertising and spreading the word to get people to download the free app, and then they get that money uh, you know, as people sell through that app. Um, so this is uh, this is actually attractive from a buyer's perspective. Um, they've got uh, their traffic channels all laid out here. They talk about their expenses for uh, paid Facebook ads, uh, shipping. Uh, they've got uh, virtual assistant employees in the Philippines who handle the day-to-day -day running of the business, which also fits some of our criteria. It's going to be easy to plug in as an owner of this and have it run. Um, you know, you can go hands-on if you want, or hire a manager to manage these virtual assistants. Um, let's see here. Developer is needed for approximately two to three hours a month to fix any bugs. That's comforting. Uh, so there's lots of lots of good information here, um, and uh, this this business in particular that we look at happens to fit a bunch of those ideal characteristics for a business that you might want to inquire a little bit further about. Um, so all the things that are included in the sale, these are, these are the assets. You get the domain, all the site content, uh, the trademark, the email list of 20,000 subscribers, which is absolute gold. 
um, Facebook account with uh, 14,000 likes. I don't know how valuable that is anymore. Um, we've got, uh, oh, in a group with 51,000 members, that is valuable as far as reach on Facebook. Uh, YouTube accounts, 33,000 subscribers, uh, so that's good. Um, standard operating procedures, established uh, supplier contracts and relationships, employee contracts. Um, and uh, they do note that you need to have an approved AdSense account, AdSense account uh, before purchasing the business to ensure a successful migration of the business. And this is another cool uh, feature on Empire Flippers. They actually have podcast interviews here. So you can click here and listen for how long is this one? 18 minutes of uh, interviewing the owners of this business um, and then sort of telling the story about it. So Empire Flippers is a very, very good place to uh, to uh, shop businesses. Um, it's uh, the, the, the fact that it has so much great data doesn't mean that you shouldn't do your due diligence, um, but it does mean that there's a lot more uh, information at your fingertips and you can make a better decision about which businesses are worth time looking into or having a broker uh, look into on your behalf. Uh, the next one, this is probably the most common or most heard of one, and that's Flippa, Flippa.com. Flippa.com back in the day um, used to mainly be associated with buying and selling domains, uh, and now they sell you know entire businesses and apps here as well. And uh, it's uh, it's it's got quite a bit of information. It's come a long way in the last few years. Um, let's click on this one right here, strobeprops.com. And so far, we've been looking at pretty much only online stuff. Uh, in a moment, we'll have a look at buying brick and mortar businesses as well. But here we've got a business. Uh, the asking price is uh, three hundred and five thousand dollars, and they literally do uh, fake money. That's that's what this business is. It's a, a a prop money business and uh, what they sell is very cool very real looking bundles of cash uh, for movies for Hollywood movies uh, music videos all that kind of stuff uh, you know most of that stuff that you see uh, people swimming in in, uh, in in music videos you know when the rappers are, are throwing the money all over themselves and stuff um, that's that's from companies like this and so this is a pretty cool um, unique company, I should say, uh, and it looks like they have a net profit of ten thousand dollars per month. So that would put them at about one hundred and twenty thousand per year, and one hundred and twenty thousand times three would be three hundred and sixty thousand. So they're already offering a uh, pretty low um, price here for this company, and uh, you know. There's there's less in the way of uh, verification here, versus you know Shopify for example, the uh, the exchange that we were looking at earlier. So when you're dealing with a site like this, you're really really I mean it's it's beyond question. If you're new to buying businesses, you hire a broker and dig in and find the actual data. Here you've got financials um, with uh, revenue and profit. Here a big spike back in February, um, and that spike contributes to that average net profit per month you know so if that spike doesn't happen every year you're not necessarily going to get that average net profit and it would be very important to figure out what caused that spike okay was it an exceptional month uh, well what you need to know why that spike happened there and then get a real feel for what you can actually expect the net profit to be not necessarily the average over a period of time that included an exceptional moment for some reason in February because uh, this could have just been them getting lucky and having you know one big sale to a, a movie pr production company you know whereas this is the more average you know type of uh, 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 profit that they're usually seeing per month so you really want to do your due diligence here but Flippa is, is a great place to actually get out there and find lots and lots of businesses uh, for sale and now let's move to physical businesses so biz buy sell is a great place to find actual brick and mortar local businesses. Um, this is this is the real deal. You're getting into into you know, big major uh, purchases and acquisitions here. Um, let's go ahead and hit search here and have a look in the Florida area and just uh, sort of peruse. You'll see you know, since you're dealing with real physical brick and mortar businesses, uh, the prices are considerably higher as you can see. Um, and uh, and we'll we'll go over you know how to deal with that in the funding 
lesson shortly here. But just one thing to be aware of is these prices are higher, and they're considerably higher than the standard annual revenue or annual profit, excuse me, times three model. And the reason for that is because they are bigger businesses, they're more real, at least in the sense of being tangible, and they have more history in most cases, uh, much more sales history, so they can charge a higher price. So as soon as you step out of the online into the physical space, uh, there's a good chance you're going to see significantly higher prices uh, versus their annual average uh, profit. So this one, for example, here we have a chicken coop rental manufacturing and e-commerce retail business located in Tampa, Florida. To purchase this, you would have to pay $11,500,000. Uh, their cash flow, however, is $2.6 million. $2.6 million times three is not eleven point five. Two point six million times three is more like seven seven point five million, somewhere between seven and eight million is what that would end up being. So they're able to add a whole nother. Um, you know, this is probably closer here to uh, you know annual profit times four. So uh, you know there's there's a different different math going on here because these are older. They can charge you know four or five times their uh, annual profit because they have more data you know, backing it up. Uh, here, let's actually click here and look at the chicken coop company. Um, so asking price 11.5, we saw their gross revenue every year is 8.5 million. And they mention here that they have 376% year over year profit growth. And they grow through franchising. So uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, they've got, uh, let's see here, six years, actually eight years in business, and six years ago is when they upgraded to actually doing manufacturing, and gives you all sorts of data about the uh, stuff that they sell, including uh, renting out their stuff here. Um, lots, lots and lots and lots of information here about the about the business and what you can expect. Um, let's see, they've got... Uh, 100% year-over-year sales growth and 376% in profit growth. So those are all good signs here. This looks like it would be a, a real, you know, serious company to uh, to look into investing in. Uh, you've got uh, 12 employees that you would be acquiring with the business, assuming that you're acquiring the employees. It's usually the case, but you want to make sure that that's actually part of the deal. Um, and then uh, you've got the ability to contact the seller directly here. And uh, this guy here, Ron, is probably a broker. Can't be entirely certain, but he's probably, you know, it's, it's kind of like buying a real estate, right? The listing agent. Um, so this is probably a guy who specializes in selling businesses, and he's doing that on behalf of uh, these folks in Tampa. And uh, that's who you would be communicating with. Really, really good idea to get yourself a business broker, especially for, for your first uh, several times buying businesses, uh, if you have not done it before. You can also access a more detailed uh, valuation report here, and uh, you can customize it as well. And uh, this is, uh, you know, it's a high ticket scene here, the, you know, purchasing these businesses. It's, 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 uh, it's a lot less of the, uh, you know, recreational browsing going on. So you do have to actually pay for the reports if you want the super duper in-depth details um, from biz buy sell here. But as you can see that the price isn't super high. These are like, you know, anywhere from 20 to 60 bucks for buying these reports. But um, these are your options, okay, for buying businesses online and buying businesses offline. This is where you start your shopping, theoretically. And then if you want to take it to the next step, that's when you need to move into finding actual brokers, people who are actually good at this and understand everything about it and will represent you and, and, and uh, help you with your business purchases. So let's talk about where to find them. Uh, there's a, a couple ways. Uh, first off, the marketplaces like this and like Flippa and Empire Flippers, um, they actually have their own partnerships with brokerage companies. Okay. Um, so biz buy sell, you can actually, uh, biz buy sell, you can actually find an entire listing here of brokers who specialize in this. In fact, we just saw this guy not too long ago. So we know he's active on the site. Um, you can contact these people directly. Uh, they've got some information about their performance and, and their history. Uh, you know, Thomas here has got over 10,000 businesses that he has sold, helped people sell. Um, and uh, here's 
all of his services. So this would be one place to find a broker and, and reach out to someone, see if you can work with them. Digital Exits is another brokerage company. Uh, these guys are primarily servicing sellers, but they have listings where you can purchase and you know that you're going through a brokerage company rather than just sort of a, a for sale by owner situation. Um, and it's kind of the same story over here at FE International. Um, they uh, help people buy and sell companies as well. They use the word website here, presumably because it's uh, primarily uh, SaaS and uh, e-commerce and online businesses. Um, but this is another brokerage company that you could work with. They've got listings here for businesses. So having a broker involved is, is generally speaking, going to be a good idea if you're new to buying businesses. Um, but perhaps even more important than a broker would be an attorney. You want to have an attorney on your team uh, advocating for you and, and uh, you know, um, looking out for your best interests. Uh, Avo is a great place to find an attorney, um, to find a uh, business attorney specifically. Let's go through here. Go to business attorneys and choose your state. Let's stick with Florida, just since we were using that example earlier. And in the state of Florida, we've got tons of people here. You can scroll through these. The ones that say ad next to them, of course, means that they have paid to be featured towards the top. Um, and uh, in the case of these two guys, they've got one review each. Um, you know, you want to look for people with lots of reviews, lots of experience under their belt for uh, business law. So Jacqueline here, if we were to click on her, 185 reviews, that's pretty stellar. And uh, we can read a little bit more about services that she provides, what her experience is. does look like she's mostly in the real estate area there, which is not a bad thing. She probably has a very wide experience, um, but uh, business is uh, only 10% as far as how she ranks herself um, and the, the percentage of her, her practice, her history of practice. We've got uh, Kevin Jarinski here specifically mentions buying, selling, or starting a business. Uh, so that might be a lead to follow up on here and to see if it's worth reaching out to this gentleman. Um, let's see, we've got business makes up 25% of his expertise. So um, this might be someone to reach out to. And it's always good to vet your lawyers and figure out uh, if they are as good as they say that they are on the listing sites, right? Martindale, which is a very cool tool uh, for looking up lawyers and seeing uh, you know, how they're rated by their peers and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so these guys have a whole lot of information, a very large database on lawyers uh, in the United States. And let's just look up Bob here, for example. And you've got all these individuals here. You click on their profiles and you'll see peer reviews. These are instances in which they have been reviewed by other lawyers other people in their industry. You've got biography, you've got uh, areas of practice, you've got, uh, uh, in some cases, it doesn't have it here, but in some cases you'd actually have cases that they've been involved in listed here. Um, education, history, all that good stuff, admission to the bar, uh, and then of course the peer reviews here. And uh, as you can see, this guy looks pretty stellar. So uh, this is always a good idea when you're hiring an attorney. Um, you're, you're not looking to nitpick too much. These are attorneys, um, and you're not. So, you know, you're just looking to make sure that there isn't anything particularly uh, troubling that stands out uh, about an attorney that would make you want to maybe uh, uh, think twice and, and keep shopping for another one. So this is uh, this is it. This is where you start your shopping for businesses. This is where you, uh, you know, figure out who you might want to uh, look into and consider purchasing from. Um, obviously, leverage brokers and uh, make sure you've got a lawyer in tow if you embark on this uh, business buying journey, okay? And now the next big question, of course, is funding. How do you purchase businesses with such high price tags, especially if you don't have a whole lot of capital on hand yourself? And we'll cover that in the next module.